Alright, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Path of Exile video here. Path of Exile 2 to be precise. Today we're going to be taking a look um, at some Act 1 gameplay. And credit here goes to Alkaiser Senpai. Uh, I'm just going to be doing some commentary over the video and hope, hopefully trying to get everybody kind of ready for what to expect. Once the game launches, there's still not a lot of details when you take a look at like the Path of Exile 2 uh, website or just trying to find official information, there's not a ton of stuff out there. And I'm sure that a lot of that is due to it being still, you know, up for uh, change during their closed beta. But with the game coming out in less than a month, um, I think there's a lot of stuff we can get here from this playthrough. I watched about two or three minutes of it. Uh, before I decided I'd go ahead and turn this into a video and there is a lot of a lot of stuff just in that very short time span of you know just you can pick up the mechanics what's actually going on um, how the, the game is different from PoE 1 so uh, once again this is Al Kaiser Senpai's gameplay video and I'm just gonna be doing some commentary over it so first off if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button really appreciate it helps me out getting close to uh, 1200 subs so first off I love the opening um, way your character selection works you know it was one of the first things we saw and just the artistic direction of that is amazing so first off first thing we see here very similar to Path of Exile 1 on you know the way the game starts you pick up your club or whatever starter weapon based off your class and you start killing some drowned so the impacts look good um, like you, you can feel the impact there one thing the first thing I noticed when I started watching is there's gold so that was not something I've seen anywhere and I'm curious you know, like gold was introduced in PoE 3.25 for the Settlers of Kalgoor League mechanic, but this is just in the base game. So how is gold um, influencing? Like, what what are we spending gold on in the game? Hopefully, we will see as we watch. Um, but gold actually exists in Path of Exile 2 in the base game. So here we see a skill gem. And it's interesting when you... Oh, sorry, we got ads here. Um, it's interesting when you see the the gym selected. It actually lets you... It's, it's like a basic um, skill gym. And then you get to select what you want to turn that gym into. So here we see Rolling Slam, and we get a brief glimpse of the skill tree here. So it looks like from what we could see there, there's like multiple exits uh, for your starting path. So you don't just have the, the two options to leave your starting zone, like it looked like there was multiple. And we get to this, and it's you know very similar to the uh, first Path of Exile, like mini boss, right before you go into the town, we can kind of we kind of see how, you know how the combat role is utilized. And just after this fight, when he entered the town, is so far all I've actually watched. This this is about a two and a half hour long video, so I'm probably gonna split it up into like three, um, probably, probably 30 minute long videos, just, just to break it up a little bit. So here we here's where we see, so creates a skill gem, uncut skill gem. So now you can see the different gem options, gem cutting options. And so one thing I am very curious about is like, are these class specific? Uh, like can only the warrior use those skill gems or does only the warrior have access to those skill gems? So 
So I really, really wish, uh, you know, Diablo could have been, Diablo 3 or Diablo 4 could have been the successor to D2. But, I mean, I think Path of Exile really kind of picked up the mantle that Diablo 1 and Diablo 2, uh, you know, created. And now Path of Exile 2, I feel like, is the game that we've kind of all been waiting for. Um, since since Diablo 2 and Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction. So the pacing to me, I really hope uh, that the pacing remains consistent. You know, like I think the the move speed in Diablo 2, like you could get a speedy character um, if you were to build specifically for it like you know a frenzy barb it was probably about the quickest move speed you could get um but path of exile one really like in its current form uh, that's a pretty cool uh town portal animation so i think i think in the description he said he had edited out the uh, town trips, which I'm, I kind of wish he hadn't, because I'd just be curious to see, you know, what all is available in the town. Hopefully, we will get a chance to see some of that. Um, but the the pacing, the movement speed, you know, I, I do think this is a good starting move speed. Hopefully, like I'm sure you'll get a little quicker, but I don't want it to get to the point of like Path of Exile or one, where unless you have like. 5,000 move speed, your build is considered bad, and you're just running through a map in 30 seconds, like, one-shotting everything. Otherwise, the community thinks your build is, you know, trash. So, to me, that, that type of play style, it's just not the, you know, the what I'm really looking for out of an ARPG. Um, to me, that's more of, like, an arcade, like, style mobile game. <laughs> really? But yeah, I mean, it seems like the character, you know, is taking noticeable amounts of damage here. So defense does seem like it is going to play an important uh, role in the game. And also another noteworthy thing, like Path of Exile 2, or 1, Melee was always in such a bad spot until now, so like 10 years, before they just really buffed the crap out of Melee. And I think a lot of that had to do with, hey, they knew PoE 2 was coming out, so why not just like go off the rails and try something different for Melee, and then kind of like see how it uh, plays. Um, across the community but one of their earlier solutions to you know sort of quote unquote like fix melee was to give melee a ton of like ranged attacks so you use a melee weapon but the majority of your attacks are you know you're hitting stuff across the screen so it's not really melee um, Playing Diablo 2, Diablo 1, like my favorite class was the Warrior, and then the Barbarian and Paladin, um, with with melee builds specifically. Um, and I, I like seeing this, how you are in the fray with this class, you're, you know, having to get right up next to the monsters. So if that's the case, like, you are going to have to build a, a tankier character, I, I hope. And it's not just going to be, like, all move speed and damage. I like how the uh, Devourer from POE1 is like a mini boss here. This guy looks pretty nasty. Very, very interesting seeing just how unique these boss fights are compared to... Whoa! Is he like, I don't know, is he stuck there? can't tell what's happening. Why is he not moving? Oh, you can't, like, portal out if you're getting hit. 
Okay, let's see. Okay, so there's a healing well. That's kind of an interesting change that uh, you don't just pop into town and fully heal and get your flasks. There's actually a well you have to go to. So we can see what looks like underneath the boss, like a stun bar filling up. And it looks like he just uh, stunned the boss there briefly. But yeah, there's there's not really any boss fights in Diablo 4 that are unique like this, just in how like the enemy moves. So he's oh, so he's got a tail and a, a head that can attack you, but so far it seems like just the head is the vulnerable part. So you just got another stun on there. So I wonder if. The stuns are going to be based more on like filling up a bar or if you're going to also be able to have like a you know stun based off like the thresh like life threshold uh, like in the original PoE or, or, or both okay so we did see an orb of alchemy still I'm curious to see what the gold is used for. I, I, I really like this identify um, animation and that we're still getting to play inventory Tetris to me. If the game doesn't have inventory Tetris, like, it's just not an ARPG. <laughs> um, like, it, it just feels more like an MMO. Okay, so now we get to see another uncut skill gem, level 2. So, I, see, I think those tabs on the left are your tiers of skill gem. And so, it looks like the level 2 skill gem maybe lets you cut any skill from level 1 to 2. Um, but nothing beyond that. That's how I'm assuming it's working just from looking at this. So it looks like he's got some offensive shield abilities. Looks like this class is kind of like your she your your shield using smash slam, like hard hitting type character. Uh, looked like we saw all of the. Here, let's let me. I'm just gonna rewind very quickly to that defensive skill. Tr uh, class sheet and pause and we're just going to take a look real quick um, at what we saw there okay so we've got armor evasion suppression deflect so I'm thinking deflect just based off that um image is going to be deflecting like physical ranged attacks so it looks like there's another defensive layer that we have to work with um i am curious because i thought he had a shield but he has a zero percent block chance but a 40 percent deflect chance so i'm wondering exactly how that works and then is armor, you know, I'm curious if it's going to work the same way as PoE 1 or with this percentage here. Is this an S? Are these estimated percentages? Uh, or is this just like, you know, you get a straight reduction? So I'm going to try and see if we can take a look at the gear here. Let's go back real quick just to when he got this shield. And take a look at the stats on it. Okay, so it has a 40% chance to deflect. And this shield has a 24% chance to block. So, interesting. It looks like they've... You know, did, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how what the difference is. Especially since they these shields have separate 
stats like it's not block and deflect it looks like to be one or the other so does block only affect like melee attacks potentially and deflect is ranged attacks or does block because deflect has a much higher percentage on this shield like 16 percent uh higher so you've got a 40 percent versus a 24 percent chance the other thing i'm curious about is deflect is that just going to be like completely avoiding the damage and block is only going to block a percentage of the damage um so just curious here how exactly that works let's go ahead and get back to where we just were oh sorry we got another ad here i don't really have a good way to block these unfortunately so bear with me uh save on fashion home beauty and more shop amazon fall favorites now All right, so we're back. He doesn't really, I mean, maybe one gold isn't worth running back. But look at this little tiny shield. It looks it looks like a fencer's shield almost. So maybe it's more of the evasion style shield. Here we've got looks like another mini boss. He just kind of got a stun on her, it looked like. Or filled up that stun gauge. So far, it seems like most of the bosses... Oh, he almost died. Have, like, adds. The uh, Devourer boss did not, though. I'm curious to see here what it looks like when the skill gem levels up. Is it just going to increase its stats? Like damage, etc. Do the skill gems in this have like stat requirements as far as like strength and dexterity goes? Oh, he's totally out of uh, health potions. It seems like he's really having to chug health pots. Oh, okay. Oh, so there are checkpoints that you... Okay, so it looks like just a quick level up button. Oh, man. So if you die, it looks like the boss resets if you go to the checkpoint. Yeah, it doesn't look like this shield is doing anything for him. Like, I feel like he was, uh, definitely surviving a little bit better with the other shield. So when he fills up that stun gauge, it looks like each sort of boss has its own, like, stun lock animation. Okay, so it looks like you get uh, sort of like permanent power-ups from some of these mini-bosses. That little green item she dropped just gave him like a 10% cold resist. Not for the better. It looks like there's a, a much better mix of like stats you can pick up on the uh, on the skill tree. Like I'm seeing Dex and and Strength like right next to the starting zone. So hopefully that's gonna give us like you know access to much more um, like variety in terms of builds. does seem like uh, you need 
quite a bit of mana potions though even even this early in the game like he's just chugging health and mana potions I feel like in a uh, EOE one typically you don't really have to like chug mana potions quite this much I mean he, he just he uses a couple of moves and almost burns through all of his mana. It's like usually in PoE, um, your earlier skills for these classes cost like two, two or three mana. But I mean, okay, that's like two moves there was about 30% of his mana. Oh. His game must be like lagging. I mean, he he does like three, four moves, and he basically has to chug. And then even like his health potions, they definitely they don't seem to be refilling at anywhere near the rate that they do in uh, Path of Exile One. Like just those couple engagements there. He is totally out of health potions. Like he's having to return to town just to fill his, uh, his health potions, basically. I, I don't really feel like that's ever um, been the case, really, in, in Path of Exile 1. Even like when I first started playing it in the uh, closed beta. I don't think I've seen anything so far that has required gold. But I'm I'm kind of hoping that gold maybe is going to take the place of some of the mechanics and like currency from Path of Exile 1. Like you know, orbs of re like they added respecking in um Oh, that's interesting. So your uh, secondary weapon actually shows up on your on your back. That's pretty cool. So if he switches, like, does he just put the other ones? Like, I wonder. So can you assign skills to automatically be used with your two-handed weapon? Because that would be pretty sick. You know, pr kind of similar to the. Uh, Diablo 4 Barbarian Arsenal. I mean, I know they've got the dual spec in uh, this, so you can, like, spec different sort of skill uh, skills to different um, skill trees. Or, sorry, passive trees, so that you could have, you know, like a fire uh, passive tree and a lightning passive tree, and then swap between the two skills and, and gain the benefits um but back to what i was talking about with the gold so oh my, my gosh another ad and i saved hundreds with all the money i saved i thought okay so like orb of regrets i i don't really feel like you know those are there's a, just a lot of currency items in poe1 and most people don't even use them really to, to trade it's more just, uh, hey, like, if, if I need them, I'm going to go trade Chaos Orbs for them. You know what I mean? And you just sort of slowed down or limited in what you want to do um, until you can actually, like, find a character that has enough of them to trade for. They did sort of alleviate some of that problem by adding, like, direct 
uh, purchase from vendors for a lot of currencies, which kind of standardized some of the uh, community uh, market pricing on on certain currencies because really the uh, the economy could never exceed the price of what was set in the um, vendor because you know then hey if if it's if you're charging me more than the vendor like I'm just gonna go buy it from the vendor like I don't really care if it destroys the currency like that's not you know a huge deal if there's if it's taking it out of the economy to me as an individual player um, but with with gold you know gold could have value and and be used to trade between players at a much easier um, you know c conversion rate than hey all my price has to be set in chaos orbs or um, you know divine orbs at this point in the in the econ the game slash economy it used to be um, it used to be just uh, what was I what was I trying to say um, it, oh it used to be exalted orbs and chaos but now it's divine after they sort of changed that all right now we're getting to see some big boy some big boy hammer damage definitely notice the uh, difference in the attack speed but let's say if we're using gold for a lot of those other sort of various currencies that, you know, didn't, like, in in crafting, like, some of those base sort of currencies, like, do, do we need Orb of Scourings? Do we need Orbs of Regret? Um, or could that, some of that stuff just be done with gold and, and let there be sort of a generic currency that the different um, NPCs charge you for various various things or could I possibly buy like currency items for gold direct from the vendors like if I want to let's say get an alchemy orb can I trade in gold to a, a vendor for for an alk orb so early on in the game if I want to have a certain rare type of weapon um but I just don't have any alchemy orbs or if I want to like you know get an upgrade and I don't have alk orbs especially if you know they have the same type of um, modes of play that I'm assuming they will from PoE 1 like if, if we're playing like solo self found um, or, or you know that that type of mode like I forget the, like is it uh, it's not is it merciless I forget what they call the mode but uh where just there's a significantly lower drop rate of items and you know now gold is gonna give you sort of access to things that you might otherwise struggle to find as a solo self-found player and just kind of make your general gameplay experience more consistent So now, now the character here is starting to feel much, uh, much stronger. I think just because he's got the increased like offensive capabilities, he's not having to tank quite as much damage as before to kill the uh, enemies. There's a pretty pretty good mob density even just in this act one area here so I want to see what that green item oh, okay it's just a quest item that one doesn't do anything like the one that gave him a 10% cold resist you know I'm kind of hoping there's more stuff like that because in uh like Diablo 2, there were a lot of side quests that gave you like pretty significant uh, boosts to either your stats or you know um, resistance, and you know those always felt good to get because it just kind of eased your um, earring for you. 
So, video's coming up on uh, 30 minutes here. We're just gonna kind of... So, it looks like items actually sell for gold now. That is uh, interesting to see. So, we're gonna go ahead and um, stop this video here. And we'll pick up um, the next 30 minutes of this in a second video just to kind of break up the you know viewing time for you so you're not sitting there with like a two three hour long video um, hope you guys are enjoying the, this and I'm really looking forward to Path of Exile 2 um, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on like PoE 2, Diablo 4, Titan Quest 2, Last Epoch, Grim Dawn and there's just a lot of uh, ARPGs that are that are out uh, I do think PoE 2 is probably going to be at, in that top spot, though, for me at least. But I'm curious what your thoughts are. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And remember to give them the D.